Sri Lanka, an island nation with a history that stretches back over 2,500 years, has been ruled by over 180 kings. Known as Ceylon until 1972, Sri Lanka's rich history is divided into distinct periods, each marked by the reign of these kings. The Anuradhapura period, named after the ancient city that was the heart of Sri Lankan civilization, saw the rise of Buddhism and the construction of some of the world's oldest surviving monuments. Following this, the Palanarua period brought about a golden age of art and architecture, while the Dambadenia period was a time of great political change. The final significant era, the Kandy period, was marked by resistance and resilience against European powers. Each period shaped by a unique set of rulers, each leaving their indelible mark on the island's history and culture. Today, we delve into the lives of four prominent kings who shaped the history and culture of this enchanting island. First on our list is King Dutugamunu, a ruler renowned for uniting Sri Lanka under one flag. Born in the 2nd century BC, Dutugamunu was the son of a regional king in southern Sri Lanka. From a young age he displayed a keen sense of leadership and an unyielding spirit. His rise to power began with an ambitious dream, a vision to unite the divided island under a single rule. Dutugamunu ascended to his father's throne in his early 20s. After consolidating his power in the south, he set his sights on the north, controlled by the Tamil king Alara. Their rivalry culminated in a single, decisive battle, where Dutugamunu emerged victorious. This victory marked a significant turning point in Sri Lankan history. For the first time, the island was unified under one king. But Dutugamunu's legacy extends beyond his military achievements. He was a devout Buddhist and a patron of the arts and architecture. His most significant contribution was the construction of the Ruanwelisaya Stupa, a massive Buddhist monument that stands as a testament to his dedication to the Buddhist faith. This architectural marvel, adorned with gold and precious gemstones, became a beacon of Buddhist practice and a symbol of the unified Sri Lanka. His reign also saw the spread of Buddhism across the island. He encouraged the practice of the faith, constructed temples and monasteries, and sponsored Buddhist scholars. His efforts played a significant role in establishing Buddhism as the dominant religion in Sri Lanka a status it holds to this day. King Dutugamunu's impact did not fade with his death. His vision of a unified Sri Lanka, his commitment to Buddhism, and his monumental architectural contributions continue to shape the island nation. His legacy is etched in stone, in the hearts of the people, and in the annals of Sri Lankan history. King Dutugamunu's reign left an indelible mark on Sri Lanka, setting the stage for the country's unified future. Next, we explore the reign of King Kasapa, a visionary known for his architectural prowess. With a tale that's as intriguing as the man himself, King Kasapa's reign is a fascinating chapter in Sri Lanka's history. His rule, though marked with controversy, was an era of grand architectural advancements, the pinnacle of which was the creation of the Sigiriya Rock Fortress. Nestled amidst the lush greenery of Sri Lanka, Sigiriya, or Lion Rock as it's commonly known, stands as a testament to Kasapa's love for art and architecture. This massive rock column, rising 200 meters from the forest floor, was transformed into an impenetrable fortress and a royal palace. Its strategic location, atop a towering boulder, gave it a natural defense against any invaders. But Sigiriya was more than just a military stronghold. It was a work of art, a monument to King Kasapa's vision. King Kasapa's reign was not just about building fortresses and palaces, he had a deep appreciation for beauty and aesthetics, which is evident in the exquisite frescoes found at Siguria. These frescoes, painted with such intricate details, depict beautiful maidens, decked in vibrant colors and delicate jewelry. These images, believed to be celestial nymphs, were painted with such precision that they seemed to come alive on the rock face. Then there's the mirror wall. This highly polished wall was so reflective that King Kasapa could see himself while he walked alongside it. The mirror wall is also adorned with ancient graffiti, providing us with a glimpse into the minds of the people who visited Sigiriya centuries ago. King Kasapa's reign, filled with architectural marvels and artistic feats, was indeed a golden period for Sri Lankan art and architecture. It was a reign that saw the creation of an architectural masterpiece, an enduring symbol of a king's vision, ambition, and his love for art. King Kasapa's reign, though controversial, left behind an architectural marvel that continues to awe visitors today. His contribution to Sri Lanka's architectural heritage is a testament to his vision and artistic talent. Even today, Sigiriya stands tall, 
a symbol of a king's dream etched in stone. Our journey continues with King Datusena, a ruler who brought about a period of restoration. This monarch ascended to the throne in the 5th century AD, during a time when Sri Lanka was grappling with the aftermath of foreign invasions and internal strife. But rather than being deterred by these challenges, King Datusena saw them as opportunities for restoration and revival. His reign was marked by a series of ambitious projects aimed at restoring the island's infrastructure that had fallen into disrepair. But King Datusena's restoration efforts were not just limited to physical structures. He understood that the spiritual well-being of his people was as important as their physical well-being. Thus, he also focused on rejuvenating the Buddhist temples that had been neglected over the years. One of his most notable achievements was the restoration of the irrigation system. The king recognized the significant role that water played in the lives of his people. He understood that a robust irrigation system was vital for agriculture, which was the backbone of the economy. To this end, he embarked on a monumental project that would leave a lasting legacy, the construction of the Kalawewa tank. The Kalawewa tank, an engineering marvel of its time, was built to store and distribute water for agriculture and drinking purposes. It was a testament to King Datusena's vision and commitment to his people's welfare. But perhaps, what sets King Datusena apart was his understanding that restoration was not just about rebuilding structures, but also about reviving faith, restoring hope, and rekindling the spirit of a nation. He knew that for his kingdom to flourish, it needed more than just physical structures. It needed a sense of unity, a collective faith, and shared aspirations. King Datusena's reign was a period of restoration and revival, a time when Sri Lanka started to regain its former glory. His efforts laid the foundation for the prosperity and progress that the island would experience in the years to come. Through restoration and resilience, King Datusena helped to usher in a new era of prosperity for Sri Lanka. We conclude with King Parakramabahu, a ruler known as the Great Builder. King Parakramabahu I, who reigned during the 12th century, was a monarch whose architectural vision was grand and ambitious. His reign is often referred to as the Golden Age of Sri Lanka due to the extensive building projects he initiated. One of the most notable feats of his reign was the construction of the Parakrama Samudra, which translates to Sea of Parakrama. This wasn't a sea as we might imagine it, but rather an intricate network of reservoirs and canals, demonstrating Parakramabahu's keen understanding of water management. The Parakrama Samudra was more than just an engineering marvel. It was a lifeline for the people, providing water for irrigation and ensuring food security. His architectural prowess didn't stop with the Sea of Parakrama. Parakramabahu was also instrumental in the development of the city of Polonarua. Under his watchful eye, Polonarua transformed from a modest settlement to the island's thriving capital. He commissioned the construction of palaces, Buddhist temples and even a seven-story high royal library, turning Polonarua into a city that rivaled the grandeur of the world's most prosperous metropolises of the time. Beyond his architectural achievements, Parakramabahu was also a patron of the arts, fostering a cultural renaissance during his reign. He believed in the harmonious blend of architecture, nature and culture, and his reign was characterized by this philosophy. But what sets Parakramabahu apart is his vision for a prosperous and self-sufficient Sri Lanka. He once said, let not even a drop of rainwater go to the sea without benefiting man, highlighting his commitment to the efficient use of resources. King Parakramabahu's reign was one of progress and development, leaving a lasting legacy that can still be seen in Sri Lanka today. His architectural marvels stand as a testament to his vision and leadership, reminding us of a time when Sri Lanka was a beacon of architectural and cultural brilliance. From unifiers to visionaries, restoration kings to great builders, Sri Lanka's royal history is as diverse as it is long. We've journeyed through the reigns of four noteworthy kings, each leaving a distinct mark on the timeline of this island nation. King Dutugamunu, the unifier, who brought together a divided land under one flag. Then we encountered King Kasapa, the visionary, whose ambitious and artistic spirit is etched in the rock fortress of Sigiriya. We moved on to King Datusena, the restoration king, who revived the glory of Anuradhapura. And finally, we met King Parakramabahu, the great builder, remembered for his monumental construction projects that still stand today. Each king, in his own unique way, contributed to the vibrant tapestry of Sri Lanka's history. As we conclude our journey, we are reminded of the rich tapestry of history, that tells the story of this island nation, 
a tale woven by kings who dared to dream, build, and transform.